I do recommend uh, is to watch this video the whole way through once so that you can kind of get a feel for the whole process and then come back and watch it and pause it after each step so that you can do that step and then continue on. Hi, my name's Amy. Uh, I am a science teacher. I live in Monroeville and today I'm going to show you how to make strawberry jam using one of the kits that's available at our local public libraries. And I'm going to use these supplies here, but I'm going to show you in a second all of the supplies that are available from the library that will get you started. This is the supplies that you can get from the library. This is the canning pot. Inside the canning pot is a strainer, so if you have something that has um, lots of seeds or if you want to actually make jelly, you would put cheesecloth in this and then put your um, fruit in it and it would make clear jelly. Um, we're not going to use that today, but it is in the pot. There is a rack in the pot and that is so that the glass jars uh, do not hit the bottom of the pot and it just keeps the, the water moving around it. So you want to keep that in there whenever you put the jars in. I'll show you that later. So in this canning tool kit that also comes, you're going to get your funnel, which will help you put your um, jelly or jam into the jars. You have a uh, thin spatula that will help you uh, pop bubbles in the jars to make sure that there's no extra air in there. On the other end, it helps you to measure the head space, but I'll show you how you can do that on the jar as well. This is a, um, a tool to help you tighten the rings, but you don't want the rings super tight, so I actually won't be using this. You just want to do them finger tight, and I'll show you how that works as well. This is a lifter for um, the lids. You actually don't need this either anymore. It used to be that you had to boil the lids before you put them on, and now you don't need to do that with the ball canning lids and any of the other lids that I've experienced the past few years. Uh, they just kind of changed the um, recommendations that you don't need to boil the lids. This is the jar lifter, and I'll show you how that works. That actually lifts the jars out of the pot whenever uh, it's super hot. So you want to make sure that you're safe whenever you're using that. So that is what you are going to get from the library. Now I do want to show you one other thing. Is there are a series of canning books that are available at the library. This is one of my favorites for beginners because it has lots of different details in it. This is the all new Ball Book of Canning and Preserving. Um, Ball is kind of the name in canning and it is a very good place to start. So they have things in here about how the actual canning will look. They have lots of different charts and things. Um, this is, I'll show you this later, for actually testing the jam. This is actually a pictorial of how to do the jam and, and have it in the, the canner and things like that. So this is a very, also available from the library, it's a very good place to start. This is the recipe that we're going to use today. It says mixed berry jam, but it's a very good basic recipe to use that if you want to use mixed berries. If you see at the top here, it says strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, and or raspberries. So you gotta stick with those um, for this to make sure that it is safe at the proper uh, acid level. Uh, but you can do mix of any of those or you can just do a single berry jam as well. So today we're going to do single berry jam with the strawberry and you can see that you need four cups of crushed berries you need the pectin which i'll show you that the three cups of sugar and then six half pint jars so the so that's the recipe that we're going to be using today this is the granite ware pot that you can get from the library what we did is hot water up to, there's kind of lines or indented spaces on the side there's Kind of one line a second line we filled it up to the second line again you leave this rack in here right now i'm touching this because it's just hot water from the tap um, but that is going to be uh, just staying in there and what i want to show you what you can do at this point is you can put these jars what i'll do is take off the lid in the ring and you're just going to take this glass jar and put it in you're going to fill it with water in, it, the water is the water's hot. It was just from the tap, but it's still hot. So you're going to take this, fill it with water, put it in. And you're going to do that 
For this recipe, it says it needs six jars. So I would say that we would put eight jars in just to make sure that if the recipe makes a little bit more, that we have jars prepared. So the stove is on right now. We're going to get this up to a simmer so that the jars, when you're putting the hot jam into the jars, the uh, jars are hot as well. And it's going to make sure that there's not a big temperature change between the jar and the jam as you put it in. The recipe we're using today for the strawberry jam calls for four cups of crushed berries. Ideally, use the berries locally, um, but I wanted to show that um, you can use frozen berries of any kind at any time of the year as well. Or if you're uh, kind of pressed for time, what I do is I'll go out and pick local berries um, and then put, wash them, put them in bags, put them in the freezer, and you can make it um, whenever you have a canning day, whenever you have time. So. Uh, either way is fine to use fresh berries or frozen berries. So what I'm using today is organic strawberries. I just got them at Costco uh, and they are, um, I just, they're, they're individually quick frozen, which doesn't really matter for us because what's going to happen is I'm just going to crush them with a potato masher. Uh, so again, it needs four cups and that's going to be four cups after you mash them. So they are whole right now. So I'm just going to put in four cups to start but we will then remeasure after we mash them. So that's three, and we have four. This definitely can be a sticky job. So I'm using my potato masher. Smash them, smash them. They will cook down a little bit too as they're actually cooking, but you definitely want to smash these. Now, if you're using um, blueberries, you do not have to smash them as much. If you want to, you can, but you can definitely leave some whole blueberries in there. It's definitely fine to do that. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here because I think we will need them. Smash, smash, smash. And you don't have to be uh, super meticulous about this. If there's some bigger chunks, that's totally fine. If you want it smashed more, you can do that. Um, you can, uh, like, like I said, you can smash them a lot finer and that's totally fine. That's personal preference, but they will cook down once they go into the pot. So we're going to take this prepared fruit and put it right into our nice heavy bottom steel pot, or yep, yeah, steel pot, uh, to three and four actually we're just right i'm going to pour that little bit in there all right so now that we have our strawberries in the pot what we're going to do is take this over to the stove and i'm going to take the pectin with us so this is classic pectin it is from ball and what it's called it's called flex batch because what you do is you scoop it some of you um, may have been more familiar with a little box of pectin that comes with um, that comes with a little pouch in it and it's just one measure of pectin. Now this, um, I do want you to realize you can get this at Target, you can get it at Walmart, you can get it at local hardware stores. They almost always have it. It can be a little bit difficult to find lately just because more people are canning um, and with shortages it happens. But I also want to show you, if you don't check out the book from the library, there are directions inside this, um, inside the jar um, label. So there's a little thing that you peel off. It has directions on there. So if you don't have that recipe that I showed in the beginning, it's totally fine. It is in uh, the label and it's always there. There is also lower sugar or pectin you can use that allows you to use less sugar in a recipe. Uh, so if that is a concern for you, uh, that is something that you can use. Again, recipe is right in the label, so it is something that is easy. So I'm gonna take this pectin and the strawberries over to the stove and get it started to boil. Okay, so we are over here at the stove. We have the strawberries on. You can see the steam is starting. Just coming over here to check the pot. That is still getting up to temperature. It's not simmering yet, but we wanna get that to the simmer with those jars in there. So the strawberries are already starting to bubble. It hasn't been on that much, but the recipe says that we need four and a half tablespoons of the pectin. So we're gonna one, two, three, four, 
and a half tablespoons. So then we're going to stir this. And what you need to do is <clears throat> bring the mixture to a full rolling boil. So that's something that I had to learn um, when I first started canning, that a rolling boil is a boil that can't be stirred down. So as you stir, you'll see like foam and bubbles starting on the edges and it can't be stirred down. So right now this was starting to bubble, but as soon as I stirred it, um, the bubbles are gone. Okay, so that's what we're going to do is just wait for this to get it to a full rolling boil and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so now we have the strawberries and the pectin and I'm stirring and see how on the edges it is still bubbling even though I'm actively stirring. So that is the rolling boil. So that's, we know that it is doing the rolling boil. I have pre-measured three cups of sugar here. It says that you're going to put that in all at once, stir that in. We're going to return that to a full rolling boil and then we're gonna boil it hard for one minute. And it really is, I set a timer whenever we get there. So you can see that it's starting to turn shiny. Uh, that is the sugar that's melting in there. Make sure you have a nice long handled spoon for this. If you have a wooden spoon, that's fine because that's going to not conduct the heat as much. Um, I just have long handled spoons that help keep my hand out of there. So I'm still stirring. See how it's nice and shiny? And you can tell that there's the sugar that's melted in it, but it is not at the rolling boil yet. So we're going to get this back up to the rolling boil and just keep stirring as it's happening so you don't want it to burn. You do have to stir, stir, stir. All right, so we are now boiling hard. It probably, it, it took less than five minutes to get to this point. So what I'm gonna do, set the timer for one minute, stirring, and stirring, 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 and stirring constantly. And then we're going to do this for one minute and then we'll pull it off the heat. I have towels on my countertop ready to accept the pot whenever I get it over there. Make sure that you uh, handle the, the pot handles with care. They're going to be very hot from being over the flame. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is this frozen plate or spoon test. We're gonna test the set of the, the jam just to make sure that it's the right consistency. So I have a plate in the freezer and I'm going to show you what to do with that. A little plate so what I'm gonna do take a little bit of the jam let it get on the frozen plate for a minute there it says return the plate to the freezer for a few minutes and the jam is set wrinkles when pushed with your finger and does not have a pool of syrup around it so we're going to take this we're going to put it back into the freezer just for a minute We'll just leave that there. And while that's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this little setup here that I have towels here. I always have black towels because if not, they would be stained with all of the things that I can. And then underneath is another towel just to protect the countertop and make sure nothing cracks. That might be a little bit um, too much, but it, it's just for safety purposes. So uh, what I want to do next too is to show you I'm gonna turn off the, the canning pot over here. The canning pot is, you can see that it's, there's lots of steam coming out of it. It's simmering. I'm going to turn it off because I'm going to be reaching into the pot. So I'm gonna put the lid off to the side there. This is the canning, or I'm sorry, the jar lifter. So I'm gonna move these little handles out of the way here. And it's hard to see on the video, but the jars are in there. I'm going to take them. I'm going to dump them out of the, from the water, put a on top of the jar, just so I'm not dripping hot water everywhere. Take these all out and then I'm putting them, I'm leaving some space, but again, I'm putting them on that towel just to make that there, make sure there's no shock. Sometimes if you go from something that is super hot to something that is cold, like a countertop, and you know, we have air conditioning, so it's 73 degrees or so in here. So we don't want <coughs> the shock of the temperature difference to cause an issue. So we'll take all the jars out. Even if we do not use all of the jars, that's totally fine. 
Um, but again, we just wanted to have them prepared to make sure that we didn't uh, get shorted if we had too much. The other thing that you can do if you don't have enough jars is you can put this in um, some kind of uh, container and just put it in your refrigerator and use it. That's totally fine. It makes it, um, it's not shelf stable at that point, um, but at least you're not wasting your jam at all. All right, so I'm going to put the lid back on the canning pot. I'm going to turn it back on to get it up to a boil. We do want that at a boil. I'm going to come over to the freezer, grab my little bit of jam out of the freezer, and we're going to do the canning, the, the freezer test, and just make sure that that's a nice consistency. Uh, that's how it would be, you know, great on toast, and it would be, uh, it, we're good to go with that. I think the jam is ready, and it's in the, the, the steel pot over here. I'm giving it a last stir. There is a little bit of foam. That is okay on there. It's not going to ruin anything. It's not unsafe. So I'm just stirring it back in. It's not a big deal. Um, you'll see some recipes that they'll say put a little, maybe half teaspoon of butter in to break down that foam. You can do that. Do not use margarine. Don't use anything else. Just plain butter. Um, but what we have now is we're going to fill our jars. We have the canning funnel that does come in the canning kit from the library. And I have a ladle. You can have any kind of ladle that you want. Uh, this is a specific canning ladle. Again, because I do a lot of canning, it is very helpful because it is semi-measured with how much you're going to put in. So that is not enough. You can't just use it as the measure, but what you're gonna do is you want to use a, or I'm sorry, leave a quarter inch of head space. So what <clears throat> that is, I'm going over here on the end of this um, tool here is, uh, this is a spatula tool that you're going to make sure that if you had something that was chunkier, you might have bubbles. So you can go down the edges with this of your jar, whoops, and you're going to make sure that there's no bubbles. And then the other thing you do on the other side of the uh, handle here, there's <clears throat> a measuring tool. And you want to leave a quarter inch of head space. Right now, I have about a half inch. So I'm going to put a little bit more in here. And as you do this more, you end up um, realizing, you know, where that is, where that quarter inch is. So I'm going to keep going through and filling all of the jars with this delicious goodness. It smells very tasty. You wanna try not to touch the inside of the jars, anything like that. It's not horrible if you do, because these are going to get boiled um, and it's going to make sure it kills any of the, the bad bacteria that would be in there that would cause issues. Just keep filling, keep filling. And what we'll do next is we'll wipe down the jars and I'll show you that. I'm gonna take out my spoon here. We don't need that right this second. You can use a spatula in here if you want uh, to be able to get your jam out of the pot. That's totally fine. As long as it is a uh, high temperature safe spatula, you wanna be careful with that. Get in all of our strawberry goodness. The little lines uh, that are the indentations for putting on the screw bands, they actually help with measuring as well. So I'm making sure I put the sticky bits into the pot, use this to make sure there's no bubbles, just slide it right down the edge. You don't want to use anything metallic, you wanna use this little rubber spatula because it's very helpful. Sometimes uh, there is a plastic tool that they'll use that will be in canning kits or be available and that's totally fine to use as well. I do often use a spoon to make sure things are even. All right, so the next part that you want to do is you're going to have a dampened paper towel. So there's two jars that I didn't use. So the recipe called for six. We got six exactly how we were supposed to. So I'm going to wipe this off like this. And it, it, be careful, it is hot. Um, so just 
be careful. And what you'll do is this is the lid and it is a two part lid uh, and it is the screw band that's here. So you're gonna put that on top, screw it down. You do not want to tighten it as hard as you can. You just, it's called finger tight. You just do that, uh, it's, it's secure. White, make sure that there's nothing sticky that's going to prevent it from sealing. Put that on. You just put it on as tight. Uh, you, you can kind of feel when you start to feel resistance, that's when you stop. You want it a little bit loose, but not loose. That uh, You can still pick it up by the ring and it is still sealed, but you don't want to crank it down because the air needs to be able to escape once you put it back into the canner. So these are going to go into the canner, just like this. I'm going to turn off the pot of water, take off the lid. We turn that off so as you're putting things in, it's not boiling and coming up and hitting your hand. So you use the, the jar lifter. You want to space them out so they're not touching. Again, leave that rack in there. That needs to be in there to make sure that the water and air can move around. You can see that the jars are bubbling. That's the air being pulled out of the jars. Make sure that as you're putting these in, that there's at least one to two inches of water above the jars. You want to make sure it's always like that. So make sure um, if you need to add water, that's totally fine. Of course, you don't want it bubbling over. So if you have too much water in there, you can take some out. Try your best to make sure that all the jars are standing upright. So one just kind of fell over a little bit and I made sure to pick that up. So all of the jars are nicely spaced. Again, you can see the air starting already to be pulled out. So I'm going to turn the canner back on. And what you'll do is once it gets up to a boil again, So right now, because we added things in there, the water isn't boiling. So once it gets to the boil, boiling again, we will, um, what they'll say is process the jars for 10 minutes. So that means keeping them at a uh, low boil in the pot. Uh, I'll put the lid back on it right now. And once it gets to a boil, we'll set the timer for 10 minutes. So that's what we're doing now, getting this back up to a boil. I'll peek in there to see and then we will get this up to a boil for 10 minutes. Okay, so now the timer's going off. That was our 10 minutes. You can see that the flame is on, the steam is going. I'm gonna turn this off. Then we're going to turn off the timer. We're gonna set it again for five minutes. We can kind of crack the lid a little bit to let some of the steam out. We let the jar sit in the pot for five minutes. Like I said, I started the timer and the flame is off and we're just going to let them set for five minutes and then we'll remove them over to our towel so that they can rest. All right, so our five minute timer is going off right now. We're gonna turn that off. This is the rest after everything is boiled in there. So again, I'm gonna grab my towel so I don't get water on the floor. Just lift them straight out. There will be water on the top. That's okay, I'm bringing them over putting them right on my towel that I have set out on the counter. That water will evaporate. It's not a big deal. Just, it's totally fine. So we, again, six jars of jam. Putting these here, they're going to rest there and I'm going to uh, not touch them for 24 hours. That's what they say, 24 hours, don't touch them. And what will happen in a few minutes or what should happen in a few minutes is the lid is going to uh, pop down the little circle kind of in the middle is going to pop down i'm not going to touch it i'm not going to make it touch down anything like that uh, but it is going to <coughs> pop down in and that's going to indicate that it is sealed so i'm not going to touch these for 24 hours they will cool they'll sit on the counter 
Uh, and then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll remove the ring and the rings can be stored, but the, then what you do, I'll show you on this one here. So this will be closed like this. Uh, there'll be the jam in it, of course. I don't wanna touch those ones because they're hot, but I will remove this ring and this lid that will pop down like that, okay? And you won't be able to remove it. If you are able to remove it, what you need to do is just put it in your refrigerator and that's one that you're going to not be able to keep on your shelf. But it, what it should do is it should seal enough that when you try to kind of lift it up a little bit, um, it won't pop off. If it pops off easily, uh, it's safe to eat, but you need to put it in the fridge. Um, and again, store it with the rings off. And then you'd have your six jars of jam. Uh, at this point, I would turn my canner back on because I'd be doing another batch. Um, but that is, that's if you're doing one batch, you're done. And that's it. All right, hopefully you had fun using the canning kits that are available from the library and you're going to have some tasty jam. Thanks. All right, so what I want to show you is these are still cooling on the counter. We will leave these here, like I said, for 24 hours. Um, but what I want uh, to make sure that you understand is you should label all of your jars. So these stickers, they sometimes come with the ball jars, sometimes they don't, I'm not sure of the reasoning, but you can just take a piece of paper, you can take a Sharpie and write on the top, there's a little space for a date on them. Um, but what I do is have this label, it just says strawberry jam, it has the date on it, uh, and I will affix that to the top tomorrow. Again, don't touch them today, uh, but after I take off the ring, everything's dried, and then I would put that on. The other thing that I do want to mention is um, a lot of things will tell you that to make sure you eat these within one year, it is still safe after that one year. It is totally fine to eat it after that one year. Just the quality of what you're eating is going to be decreased a little bit, but it is completely safe to eat um, after that one year. But that is kind of like what you'll see and the, the rationale for that is the um, just the, the, the uh, just the flavor and things might be a little bit reduced. So that is why that recommendation is that way. Thanks.